let's have a look at the last few settings uh, under Elastic Audio. Now I currently have all my tracks set to real-time processing and this means that all of the time stretching being applied to my Elastic Audio tracks is being done live by the computer. Uh, this means that it's going to use up more of your processing power. Uh, we might be able to see something under system usage here. Uh, let's hit play and see. Well, let's do a time stretch. Uh, let's view the elastic properties for the bass. We'll stretch it loads and solo it. And let's see if we spot anything on this. Okay, it doesn't go up hugely. This is a pretty powerful machine. Uh, if I change this now to rendered processing, this will have to calculate the actual uh, time stretch uh, and then it just plays it back. Uh, we might see a little bit less. Well, actually not a lot of difference at all in this case here, but if you've got a lot of tracks doing elastic audio in one go, uh, they can add up. Uh, next, we have the option of changing to uh, XForm. Now, XForm is another Elastic Audio plugin. Uh, it's one that is always pre rendered, it can never be uh, live or real time. Uh, let's see the Elastic properties for this track. I'll knock this up to some significant amount of time stretch. And let's give this a listen. Uh, theoretically, XForm should give you better results. It's still calculating it actually. Uh, I'll show you another window, which is the um, uh, task manager. And you can see it's still actually figuring it out, which is why it's greyed here. Finally finished. And let's hear it. <laughs> Uh, particularly concentrate on this note here. Uh, this is actually better than on polyphonic. I'll show you in a moment. Uh, actually, tell you what, let's uh, select this and bounce it down. Uh, we'll choose import after bounce, of course, and I'll go for interleaved in case I want to take it somewhere else afterwards. Let's put that in a new track. And if I change this back now to polyphonic, uh, we should be able to hear the differences between them. So polyphonic and listen for the wobbliness I'm expecting around here. Compared to when we used X form. As you can see, it's given me better results. Uh, the trouble is with using uh, XForm is where well, we already saw how long it took to actually uh, render and figure out the XForm version. So if you're actually trying to make adjustments to things like timing and you want to hear what you just did, it's going to take a while to wait until it's ready. The best approach usually is to work on this in a real-time mode and then when you finished, change it to X form. Uh, let's just concentrate on the drums now with the last of our modes, which is uh, vary speed. Now, if I view the elastic properties for this and I time stretch it, uh, vary speed acts like a, a, well, an old fashioned tape machine. Uh, so it will actually affect the speed uh, and the pitch together. Uh, let's hear its original pitch. And I'll stretch that out. And if I take it the other way.
Now this is particularly cool if you start using it with uh, tick based tracks. Let me set this back to 100% and change my track from sample to tick based. And at the moment it won't have any audible effect. I'm going to add my tempo ruler to my timeline and I'll expand it so I can see it more clearly. And I can draw in a tempo change. I could use any of these tools, like so. In fact, for the first time I can now use parabolic and S-curve. These are only for drawing in tempo changes. So I'll do this, it puts a nice paraba parabola <laughs> to it. Uh, let's hear the effect. And you can make this really drastic if you want. So it's not a mode you're going to be using very often, but it's a cool effect every now and again. Okay, so uh, that's about it now for Elastic Audio.